In this tutorial we're going to learn how to make a lead ladder. Now these are really quite easy to do if you've got MoGraph, but if you haven't, well, you don't have to be left out. We can do it actually using Expresso, and it's a relatively simple expression to actually create one of these. So just to start, I'm going to get a cube, make it 20 by 20 by 20, and then I'm going to duplicate that. I just duplicate, we'll say, yeah, we'll have, I think we'll have nine copies, and we'll do it in linear mode, don't want to do it in the Y, we'll do it in the X, and we'll go 30, okay, so we've got that, let's go about 25 actually, a bit tighter, that's better, now if we just zoom in on everything here so that we can see what we're doing, Right, so we've got the basic components for our lead ladder. What I'll do, I'll just call that cubes, and I'll drop in that one there. Oops, just put it up there. OK, so I've got those grouped nicely, which is what I need. Next thing I'm going to do is just give them some colours. So the first six I'm going to colour... I'm going to colour those green. So if we just take the red and the blue down there, so we'll colour those green. The next three, I'll colour those amber. So if we take out the blue, take that down to about 190, should give us amber, that's not too bad. And then the last one, we'll make red. Let's take those out there. OK, so we've got the basic components of a lead ladder complete now. The next thing we need to do is bring in a null object, which I'm going to use just as a controller um, for this. For now, we'll call that controller. And I'm going to create some user data for this, so go into add user data here. And we'll just we'll leave it at data, it doesn't matter, we can, we, it doesn't have to have a name really. Um, I'll use a float slider for the interface and a real value. And what I want to do is go from minus one to nine in there. So that's got that set up. So that's my user data. From here, we can work out our Expresso. So on the controller, I'll just put the Expresso tag. We'll open up the editor and uh, get on with the work. So the first thing I need to do, I've got my cubes grouped into a parent object, which is great because I'm going to use a hierarchy. So I'm going to drag that in. In fact, I don't really need to do that. I'll just take that away. What I need is just to grab a hierarchy from here in the iterators. So grab a hierarchy. Because I've placed the Expresso tag where I have, its reference is the controller and it actually needs to be cubes. So we drag that into the reference there. So that's the first thing. So now we're actually iterating through all of these. We're just literally sequencing through these ad infinitum. So that's all sorted out there. The next thing I need to do is bring in an object index and plumb the output of the hierarchy into the instance input there. Following on from here, I need a compare node. So I'll come down to Logic Compare, just put that there, and I'll get my index value here, and I'll plug it into the input there, and I want to compare this to being greater than. The next thing I need to do is drag in my controller, come down to User Data, and plug the output here into the second input of the compare there. Okay. So I'm saying if my index value is greater than the value of my controller's user data, then I'm going to get a true output here. So that's the first thing we're going to do there. Following on from here, we need a condition node. Come down to logic condition. And the output of the compare, which will either be true or false, is going to be plugged into the switch. 
and I just simply need a 1 in input 3. We can leave 2 as 0 and that completes that part of the expression there. To finish it off I simply need to grab any one of these cubes. I'm going to start with, well just grab this one. It's all this, is, all this is is a placeholder. So what I need first in the input section here I need object and I also need in the basic properties visible in editor. Just going to make that a little bigger. And then my instance can be passed from my object index to the input of the cube there. So as these are sequenced, they're being passed from the object index into our placeholder here. And then the output from the condition can be plumbed into here. And you can see instantly they've all gone back to the first one there because our controller is currently set to zero. What I'm going to do, I'm going to select, select the controller and this user data here, I'm going to say add to HUD. Bring it in and I'm just going to move it over so that we can see it over here. And in the controls here I'm going to say show always. As I said it's set to zero so our first cube is there. If I pull it back to minus one they all disappear. And now when I use the slider I can make my ladder actually work. So there we go, that absolutely works. Now obviously you probably would control this in a slightly different way rather than just using the controller. This is just done for demonstration purposes. But one possible way that you could control these is by using noise. You can't actually do it with the sound node unfortunately. Um, it doesn't actually work very well at all with that. But the noise could help you out. Now what you can do set that up. I'll just unplug the controller there. It's alright, it's gone back to zero, but that's not a problem. We'll just plug the noise into there. And then in the noise, we can experiment with the um, the various bits and pieces that, that are coming out of the noise here. So we could use, if, if we change this to turbulence, it might be more interesting. What we can do is adjust a few of these numbers. So if we make them a little bit bigger, and see what we get. We're going to take scale 15 somewhere there, and the frequency is just a bit higher there. We can probably change our seed if we wish to. Okay, so we've got a, a bit of a difference there. And then if we play the sequence, we start to see that it does actually work in a similar sort of way to an LED, gra an LED ladder graph. If we just play around with the numbers some more, we could probably get it to the top. Um, get it to, the, to show the red as well as the, the ambers. Let's play around a little bit in here. That's changed it a bit in the opposite direction. So if we go to a lower value, that's interesting as well. That's, that's actually calmed it down a bit, which is more perhaps what we're looking for. If we go to 23 in here, that calms it down a bit more. We might want to go perhaps to a lower value. That's more interesting perhaps. The same, same with the amplitude, if we just play around, we're, gonna, we're going to get different values. That's really calmed it down, which is not what we want so much. We maybe want a bigger value. There you go. And now we're back going right to the top of the ladder there. So there's lots of different things that you can do with the, the numbers in here and just play around with those until you actually get a setting that's pleasing and that perhaps works for you. Um, you know, you can do it in conjunction with a piece of music and just pretend that you're kind of using the sound to to actually make the ladder graphs work. But it's, there's going to be a bit of trial and error. As I say, it's, it's much, much more easy if you've got MoGraph, but this is a workaround for it that's never going to be 100% perfect. But nonetheless, it does actually help you out of a hole um, if you need to create something like this and you don't have MoGraph. But anyway, that just about completes this tutorial. So uh, just to recap, we'll have a quick look. I'll just stop the animation. Take it back to zero there. Okay, so what we've got, we took our cubes into a hierarchy so that we could sequence through them, passed these to an object index here, and we took the index value from each of the cubes there, going from naught to nine. So these are passed in sequence into the compare here. And then I'll just plug in my controller there so we go back to what we initially had. We compared the index value to the value being taken from the controller and provided the index value is higher 
than the value of the controller, we can then switch to say that we want the particular cube that's being looked at at any given time to be invisible in the editor. If the controller value is higher than the index value, then the cube that's being looked at has got to be made visible. So that's how that works. So in other words, from here, a zero means switch on the cube, a one means switch it off. That's how that works. So it's quite a simple setup, but quite effective nonetheless. So that's our tutorial. Hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon on the next one.